Hello everyone, this is Balu. Welcome to my channel, Civil Cave. In this video, I am going to discuss about the idealization of a structure. And this is a series of videos and also I am going to release whenever I get some more information regarding the practical aspect and theoretical aspect of civil engineering. And this series is very, very important for the students who are studying in civil engineering and also who are working in the industries. The main important aspect of civil engineering is you have to relate the practical and also theoretical aspects. For example, if you observe any support in practically and you have to relate it to the theory, whether it is fixed support or it is spinner support, whenever you are going to compare this practical and theoretical and when you are succeed in conversion from practical to theory or vice versa, then you are becoming the very good perfect civil engineer. So please keep this in mind and also this main aim of this series of videos is to bridge the gap between practical and theoretical aspect of civil engineering. So and myself also I am improving daily to the relate this practical and also theory. So let us get into the video. For example, if you observe here, this is the pinned support in the practically and this is a theoretical pinned support which you are going to learn in the subjects and you have to relate these both. For example, if you observe this practical pinned support, there is a development of reaction in the y direction and also in the x direction. I am talking about the coplanar force system only in the plane, in single plane I am speaking and if you talk about the three dimensional, then uh, there is a resistance develop in all the directions. But here I am going to speak about only coplanar force system in this pin support and this whatever the member you are going to see, it is allowed to rotate. So and also if you observe the member carefully here this is the pins provided and this member is not allowed to move in the y direction and it is not allowed to move in the x direction and this whatever the movement we call it as translation i am talking about movement not movement both are different when there is a restraint in the translation of the member at the support and there is going to the development of the reaction at that place. And here clearly it is, there is no restraint for the rotation of that member. So there is no development of the moment in that member. So here clearly it is clear that there is a development of reaction in Y direction and also X direction. You have to feel that support and you have to observe whether it is allowed for translation or rotation in all the directions, in which direction the restraint is provided. In that way, you have to observe the support carefully. Then only you can convert that practical support to the theoretical support. So this is regarding the practical pinned support and also theoretical pinned support. Hope you understand the difference. And also, if you have not yet subscribed my channel, please subscribe my channel and also click on the bell icon. And I'm going to do this particular videos, which is comparing this practicality and theoretical aspect of civil engineering in the upcoming videos also. So stay tuned for the upcoming videos also. And next coming to the idealization of a structure, this is a fundamental concept you have to keep in the mind. That is three dimensional force system. Whenever you are going to observe a support in the practically and you have to feel that support, whether it is restrained in the X direction or Y direction or Z direction. And similarly, whether it is allowed to rotate in the X direction, or Y direction or Z direction, then at that time you have to think that whenever the support is restrained in that particular direction, then there is a development of the reaction at that direction. Clearly, you can see that in the X direction, for example, the support is restrained, then there is a development of axial force that is FX force. And also if the in the X direction, if the support or member is restrained, then there is a development of the movement in that direction. Similarly, in the other directions also. So, this is the fundamental rule, whether that support is restrained in that particular direction for translation or rotation, then there is a development of the reaction in that particular direction. For each and every support or in any structure, this is a fundamental concept you have to keep in the mind. Whenever there is a restraint, then there is a development of reaction. If there is no restraint and there is no reaction developed in this direction, this is the fundamental concept. Next coming to the other thing. Here you can see this is the connection for the beam and also column. Here only the web 
is connected to the column. No flange is connected to the column. Why this? They are connected in this manner. And what is the force transfer mechanism in this structure? And also force transfer mechanism also very very important. You have to idealize how the load is transfer from the one member to the other member. Then only you will be perfect in your fundamentals. So here only web is connected to the column. What is the purpose? The purpose is there is only shear force transfer. This is called shear connection. If both web and also flange is connected to the column, then it is movement connection. Here you can see both web and also flange is connected to the member and is connected by the bolts. You can see clearly this is the movement connection. One question may arise: Why we are transferring only shear force? Why we are transferring both shear force and moment? And remember, shear connection means the only shear force is going to transfer, and also coming to the moment connection, both shear force and also moment will be transferred through the connection. There is a reason behind that for providing this only shear transfer and also moment transfer. And first of all, if the web is connected to the member, only shear is going to transfer, and if both flange and also web is connected to the member then both shear and moment is going to transfer how why this one is going to happen let's discuss in the next slide see here if i consider a i section this is the bending stress diagram and this is the shear stress diagram across the depth of the section here you can see clearly major part of the bending stress is resisted by the flanges see clear and the only minor part of the bending stress is resisted by the webs next coming to the shear stress major part of the shear stress is resisted by the web it is clearly shown from the shear stress and also bending stress diagram see whenever the load is going to act on this member directly the shear force is directly transferred to this web and this web is assumed as a compression member and also it is act like a column which in which uh, the ends are restrained for example this is the web and this end is nothing but fixed and also other end is fixed and there is a axial force in the member which is like a axial load in a column so the major part of the shear stress is taken by the this web itself only minor part of the stress is taken by the flanges itself for this purpose only whenever the web is connected to the column the shear force that is major shear force is transferred to that member and when both the flanges and web is connected then it is nothing but moment connection both shear and moment is going to transfer okay this is the reason behind why this shear and moment connection is provided now why we are connecting only web why we are connecting both web and also flange to connect to achieve that moment connection what is the reason in the practicality let's find out this in the next slide for example in this connection you can see only the web is connected to the column in the plan view you can see if you observe any cross section there is a major axis and also minor axis the cross section in which it is having higher bending strength with respect to a particular axis is nothing but major axis for example if i draw for this green color section i section this is the major axis that is xx for example and this is going to the minor axis which is nothing but yy whenever the you are transferring that shear to the this member the only shear force is going to transfer that is with the help of the connection with, with the web then you can transfer only shear so in that perspective there is no development of the moment in this whatever the green color section i consider this as i section you see in this i section there is no tr transfer of moment so there is no bending with respect to the yy axis whenever the moment is going to develop in the whatever this blue color section that is i considered as this is i1 and this is i2 whenever the moment is going to transfer from i2 to the i1 the i1 section is going to bend with respect to yy axis which is nothing but minor axis bending is going to take place which is undesirable for example whatever the moment which is going to transfer from this i2 to i1 is higher and also 
this I1 section is not having that particular strength to resist that bending moment, then it is undesirable in transfer from moment from I2 to I1. So, for that purpose, they are going to connect this I2 to the I1 only that the B is connected so that only shear is going to transfer. This is the main thing you have to remember. Well, if you consider a simply supported, this is a simply supported. And if you are acting any UDL tip, then whatever the bending moment diagram is going to develop is nothing but in this manner. And the total bending moment is resisted by that section. For example, if you fix the ends of the simply supported beam, which is nothing but fixed beam. And if you act that UDL on this section, and the bending moment diagram is going to develop in this manner. So, you can observe the difference clearly. So, whenever the moment is transferred from one section to the other section, the bending moment resisted by this particular section is less compared to the bending moment resisted whenever it is moment is not transferred. That means, for example, if for example, in this blue section, there is a UDL acting and it is like a simply supported structure when only this web is connected to the I, I1 and at that particular time higher bending moment is going to resisted by this I2 section and coming to the whenever this you connect both flange and also web and at the end you can see this is a moment going to develop and this particular moment is going to transfer by, by the I1 section and that particular moment is resisted by this I1 section and remaining this minor portion is going to resisted by this I2 section. This is the difference in the practicality of the structure in steel I am speaking about. Next coming to the concrete. For example, if you see this is the primary beam which is a major beam which is connected to the columns. We call it as primary beam and this is the secondary beam. You can see this is the secondary beam you can go or observing and this is the primary beam. Primary beam is connected to the columns and secondary beam is connected in between the beams itself. So, whenever the load is acting on this secondary beam, there is a moment which is going to develop on this primary beam. So, that this moment is acting as a torsion in that primary beam. Remember? So, for that reason, whenever you are going to model, whenever you are going to construct the secondary beams, at the ends of the secondary beams, they are going to release the moments. Release the moments means there is no moment transfer from the secondary beam to the primary beam because there is a development of torsion in this primary beam which is undesirable. So, this is the important thing in concrete. I am speaking already uh, in steel I have explained what is the reason behind that moment transfer and also shear transfer and coming to this RCC I have explained the reason behind the moment release in the whatever the building you are going to construct. And how you can achieve this moment release in the practically and here you can see in practically they are going to provide LD by 3. That means for example you are going to con calculate the development by using the phi sigma HD by 4 tau BD whatever may be the formula which is given in the IS code you will get certain development length. If you are going to provide that development whatever you got the value then it acts as a rigid connection that means which both moment and shear is going to transfer. In practically they are going to provide LD by 3 to attain that moment release. When we are going to provide this LD by 3 only then there is transfer of only shear there is no moment transfer from secondary beams to the primary beams. This is regarding the RCC. Okay, this is very very important for the civil engineers who are going to working in industries and also students. Here you can see another whatever the connection here both whatever the flange and also web is connected which is nothing but the moment connection. In this way you have to identify the structure in practically so that you will become the perfect civil engineer. And here you can see another example that is only web is connected to the column so that only shear is going to transfer which is nothing but shear connection. Here both weld is provided and also web is also connected to the 
column so that both movement and shear is transferred so it is a movement connection see one of the important thing next i will go into the other thing that is for example if you have given this is the column and also this is the beam and which is resting on the i section you have to convert this into theory that means what support is going to be this support and also what support is going to this support and how this the structure is going to act and how this load transfer is going to act all this you have to identify whatever the you observe in the practically and also you have to convert it into the theory now i am going to convert see for example here there is a allow of rotation in this member for example this is a member m1 and this is m2 this m1 is connected to the m2 and also m1 is allowed to rotate in this direction so there is no restraint in the rotation so there is no development of the moment in the member and it is not allowed to move in the x direction and also y direction so if there is any restraint in the x and y direction what is the support is going to be it is a pinned support and here only it is restrained in the vertical direction only single support is going to act on this member so it is a roller support i am going to identify so you can convert this member or structure into the theoretical that is nothing but here it is going to the pinned support and it is going to the roller support in this way you have to identify the practical structure and you have to convert into the theoretical this is a very very fundamental concept and you have to be strong in this here this is another structure i am taken here both the flanges and also web is restrained and it is not allowed to rotate in this plane and also it is not allowed to move in the any direction it may be x or and so y and here only one single reaction is going to develop so whenever you convert this structure then this structure is going to be this is the fixed support and also this is a roller support so this is nothing but proper cantilever b so in this way you have to convert from practical to theory and also theory to practical this is regarding the supports i have discussed in this class and in the upcoming class i am going to discuss about the load distribution in the structure so thank you for watching this video and also if you like my content please subscribe my channel and also share with your friends who are working in the civil engineering industry and also who are graduating in the civil engineering thank you